Om Shanti everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are. Currently, I'm here in India. Uh, <clears throat> as always, every Monday we get together uh, with a very special, unique Baba's child with a unique spiritual journey to explore uh, the journey towards our highest destination to the destination of returning to the home, the destination of coming close to the God himself. And this confluence age is a very unique uh, time when uh, we get to explore the best of the whole Kalpa, which is the company of God himself, and also the company of the most elevated souls of course, we get a company of elevated uh, human souls in the golden age, but we don't even know who they are, how they got there and all of this stuff. So this confluence age is the age when we get to know who we are trying to interact with and how elevated those souls are and how elevated we ourselves are. So that is the highest part of this confluence age. But at the same time, we have a highest challenge so we have to sort out all of our the most um, when we we are at the most weakest point in the whole kalpa when we have drained exhausted all of our both spiritual mental emotional and physical energies at the end of the kalpa and this is the time is a confluence so it comes with its own challenges of maya and all the trips and the tricks that mind plays on us. So how to take the protection of, how to uh, step into the canopy of protection of Baba and how to understand Maya and how to, uh, so today we will go into the subtleties of uh, uh, taking the canopy of protection from Baba. And today we have with us uh, Sister Padma. She's a doctor by profession. Uh, she, uh, so she has been serving, uh, she has a Gita Patshala in New Jersey and Mon uh, Monroe, New Jersey, and she has been uh, uh, serving Abhakti Parivar through the Telugu translation. And uh, uh, my personal experience interacting with Padma Ben is in Peace Village and also in Madhuban. Uh, she has uh, such a, a down to earth. Uh, uh, very uh, humble and at the same time very royal and uh, loving soul. So whoever interacts with her, you feel that sense of belonging. She makes you feel very comfortable. And at the same time, you get to find the hope in humanity when you interact with her. It, it's a beautiful uh, in interacting with uh, Padma Ben and then she has a very lovely journey. And just to give a little background, a couple of weeks ago, we have Srinivas Bhai, Srinivas Bhai who gave that beautiful sharing. Uh, Padma Ben is the yoga of uh, Srinivas Bhai and both Padma Ben and Srinivas Bhai are currently running this beautiful retreat center. They have everyday Murli is going on and even during the Zoom time, they are constantly busy and so dedicated to Baba service. Uh, without any further ado, I invite Padma Ben to take us, uh, shine, uh, shine some light on the canopy of protection and uh, your personal experiences of uh, taking Baba's canopy of protection. And you can share with your personal journey on this uh, very sacred path towards uh, our highest destination and Baba. Welcome Padma Ben. Om Shanti. Om Shanti Bhai. Thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. And it's my pleasure to be here to meet the family uh, in San Francisco. So wonderful. Um, so, Ashrabai introduced me. So, I am Padma, and uh, my journey always Baba asked one thing in the Muradi. He asked, Did you search for me or 
data is searched for you. So most of the time we say that we searched for God, right? Definitely we did search for God, but he searched for us more than we did. So my life journey is the best example. Best exp I experienced how he searched for me. So going to my childhood, uh, when I was around eight years of age, one saint came to my grandfather and he said, your children should do five weeks of devotion in uh, Shivalaya. The right word to say is five weeks of Abhishekam for Shiva in Shivalaya, five Sundays. So my grandfather said, Okay, we will do it. And uh, we started. Uh, I was only eight years old. My parents started. I was, as usual, every family will go. So we all went to temple for five weeks. And uh, after five weeks, after five weeks was done, my mom said, why to stop? Let us continue. So the devotion continued. Every Sunday, I started going. Um, after few, we started going as a family. And after a few weeks, uh, my parents couldn't make it because of some commitments. So it was a small village. So they told me, you go. We shouldn't, um, you, we don't want to stop. You go. Because it's a small village everyone knows so i went to be like a, at the age of 8 i started going to shivalaya every sunday without absence and uh, get up early morning pack my the um, basket with the, the coconut flowers uh, agarbatti everything and go by 9 o'clock reach to the temple and uh, the priest will be waiting for me. Once I reach, the priest, um, he takes, he used to take one and a half hour to do the devotion. This was my regular every Sunday routine. So imagine eight year old girl going temple every week, how it would be. So initially it was not, um, uh it was not that easy and uh, really not that happy to go every sunday but it was god's plan every sunday default i started going from my eight years to my 15 years of age and after such some time i started the love i started love loving that looking forward for Sunday morning. So once I left my home village, went to a different place, I started looking for Shivalaya. Where is Shivalaya? Because I, I'm missing the ritual that I did. Um, going every morning, sitting in front of Shivalingam every morning, every Sunday morning. Uh, for one and a half hour while doing devotion, just me, the priest, that's all. Not, not many people in the temple. So I used to think that I belong to Shiva. He himself is calling me. I belong to him. So once I missed that, I started um, understanding uh, what I missed. So once I went to my college, medical college, even there I looked for Shivalaya and uh, started going there frequently and uh, doing the devotion every week, even though in the college, out of place. So this is how I started and uh, Baba was pulling me. Um, I don't know. It's not Baba for me at that time. It is Shiva. 
and my thoughts were i am the child of god not uh, i am the child i belong to him this is this was my thought and i used to think that i am the big devotee of shiva and that time i did not worship anyone i don't know any other deities shiva means shiva that's all so after that um, in to the in 1997 i got married came to this country and once i came there was a diversion in the life so things changed and slowly slowly lot of gap for my devotion or with uh, shiva and uh, um uh, then i started whatever the temple close by like vishnu temple is close by so i started going there once in a while not like before at home it's whenever there is opportunity i was going and lot of diversion i would say in 1997 one day uh, shrinivas has uh, arsha bhai said shrinivas is my yugal he was in knowledge long before and because of some change in his drama uh, so i came into his life so he found out that there is brahma kumari center in long island that we were living in long island when he found out that there was a center he was so happy he was jumping and he said this is the ashram i was connected before marriage so now i am so fortunate i i see the ashram in our place let us go yes let us go so we went we went and uh, the sister welcomed us with so much love she showed all the place everything and uh, they asked us to come next time we came back and uh, uh, the, then the next time we when we went um he went and shrinivas bai shrinivas went and told to the sister padma did not do the course so the sister arranged the course there then uh, they took me to the different the sister took me to the different room and started giving me the course which i was really unaware of i don't know what is happening and uh, one hour one hour 15 minutes she was teaching me something i was sitting in front of her but but nothing went inside nothing went inside then after that uh, they told me for the second for the next class next week i said no i am not going to come then after uh, in 2001 we we went to peace village srinivas told it's a very beautiful place peace village they recently opened it's a very scenic place let us go so been there to peace village it's a really really a beautiful place i loved the place i enjoyed staying there we stayed for two days everything was so beautiful the hospitality the love of the family and the food they were serving i was really really so much um touched by their hospitality and then he went and he told to dorothy ben sister she uh, padma did only one class she is she didn't finish the course so dorothy ben took me to the room and she started giving the second lesson the soul and the supreme soul she was introducing then after that the same feeling without my knowledge why are you taking me to the class so now i told him i am not going to come 
if you are going and keeping me in front of the sister saying that putting me in the spot that she did not do the course i don't want to come and uh, he said okay i was very busy doing my professional things and along with that doing my um little bit of devotion here and there going to the temples whenever possible but shrinivas was constantly paying attention how to bring me in but i was constantly working on not to get too much close right very nice game right both of us so after a while after a while i told he said one time come to the tab, come to center there is a big program i said yes i will come but if you are not going to put me on spot that she didn't not do the course i will come if i come i want one more thing if i come i want you to come to the temple with me he said yes so i went to the uh, program and he came to the he was coming to the temple i was going to the centers and whenever we go to center the sisters definitely asked the first question right did you, did you finish the course now he started saying yes yes she did so that is how uh, my journey was continuing because i was in deep devotion and nothing was going inside i didn't even understand the first piece that i am a soul because i was so much into devotion so he was very yukti yukt he was doing whatever i need and but his main aim is to bring me in so every year we would go to peace village even though i was in not not, not in knowledge every year going to peace village and uh, every big program public programs or big celebrations we were going to harmony house so this is how it was continuing for a long time and um, then meanwhile as usual has arsha bai said it is the uh, this is the time that we are in the lowest energy everything will come and uh, we don't have energy to face the situations so the real test started many things were happening simultaneously and um, um meanwhile while doing the devotion one time i had a dream that dream was one old man came and he was um he, um he one old man came and he is all the time with me means like following me and i was scared and i ran away from him and i was hiding somewhere for long time and after that i came out still that old man was standing there i was scared but the old man came to me and he said i am your protector i am with you i will stay with you i will go with you wherever you want wherever you are going i am going to follow you it was really a uh, really very uh, unique dream i remembered each and every bit like a fresh even today so then next morning i woke up and i told to shrinivas this is the dream i got and he immediately said it's brahma baba it's brahma baba who is coming to you then i said because i was in uh, devotion then i said no no it is sai baba so i was so much deep into bhakti so i said it's sai baba then he, he was so yukti yukti he didn't say anything okay my devotion was continuing and then after few weeks or few months later i had one more dream sri vishnu sri mahavishnu in 
in um, with very light beautiful form very light very means like um, sensitive skin very light i was standing in the second row he was in he was standing in front of us and i was in the second row admiring at him and looking forward to talk to him to be with him so this was my second dream and again next morning i told to him and then he said baba is trying to give you some vision then again i said no it is vishnu i pray for vishnu right so vishnu is coming so don't take me to a different direction so this is how our um, um conversations were and one side he was trying uh, to take me to knowledge i was deeply going into bhakti and couple of other dreams also i had i don't want to go into details the same something like this very touching dreams so this is how baba was trying for me so hard but i was so reluctant to so not to come to this side because i did not understand and uh, somehow my bhakti was not completed maybe so meanwhile the test paper started the real challenges in life uh, in all the directions my energy was done down so much down by then it was 2008 phase 2007 and 8 faced lot of challenges professionally family health wise and emotionally uh fine everything name it every corner i was centered and uh, no energy soul was so weak and that's the time i happened to go to india when i went to india you all know that there are very so many mosquitoes in india so mosquito bite with mosquito bite i was sick with dengue fever and um, i was um, having low platelets fever so many uh, symptoms but no one was able to diagnose because that's the time it was just starting the dengue fever until in my area where i was living no one knows what that is so it was the time it starting and um, my parameters were all low and uh, i went into unconsciousness totally unconscious for 24 hours i don't know anything and that time srinivas was doing uh, the opening of a uh, center in his hometown i was in the hospital but he was opening baba's center he was the instrument to open the center sorry he was the instrument to open the center in his hometown and uh, he was busy with that then uh, he went and asked the sisters there uh, it seems while opening that mayugal is in the hospital she is going through this problem and the sisters gave the blessing saying that she is settling the karmic accounts she will be fine meanwhile i was in unconscious stage i was um, seeing shiva shiva in the form of shankar and something is coming and taking me but he is um he is protecting me not to be taken means like uh, uh, someone is coming to take me off but he is protecting me he was protecting me it was uh, all 24 hours the unconscious this was the scene this was the vision it was going on in my mind meanwhile the doctors figured out what the problem was the internal bleeding so many issues happened don't want to go in sense so meanwhile they figured out and they started all the treatment and slowly i regained 
the consciousness and uh, over a period of time i was okay to take care and then i came to us after coming here um since i was so sick i was not in a position to de- do much of the work and um, at that time one of the senior bk brother called us for the dinner to his place he called two families both the yugal's husbands are in knowledge both the sisters myself and other sister both of us are not in the knowledge he called both of us and uh, while talking he asked me he asked that sister first sister why are you not coming to the center brother is coming why are you not coming that sister said yeah yeah bye i will come sure i will come definitely then he asked me sister why are you not coming then i said bye i don't know i don't have that much uh, um i didn't say faith but i don't need i said i don't need to come i am good with my devotion i am getting whatever i want with my devotion i am happy with that then that brother looked at me and he smiled and sister i want to share a story with you if that is okay he he said and i said yes yes go ahead bye tell me then he said he shared a short story he told there is a king the most of you might know this story but i'm just um, what touched me i'm trying to say so there is a king that king doesn't know exactly what is happening in the uh, kingdom um, uh, and uh, there is a minister who goes to the kingdom he looks after everything and come back to the king and give the report of the kingdom and the king will give whatever the people need in the kingdom and um, this minister will take and give the that to the people there is a um, um, there is no connection between the king and the people only the minister is connecting both of them and one day one intelligent person he felt why this king, this minister is not giving the day when we ask he is not able to give he says that i will bring tomorrow from where is bringing he is he going to bring let me follow this minister and see so he followed and when he went the minister went to the king and he was sharing the news of the kingdom how the people are doing what they need what is the um their goods and bads whatever they need so everything he was sharing and whatever the people need the minister was taking from the king and whatever he takes he is bringing and giving to the people so here in this story the that senior brother he he told me he explained me the minister is the daitis the people of the kingdom are the devotees the king is the supreme father the su- the supreme oh, i i miss this so that intelligent person what he did now i know that i can see the king directly and king is so merciful he is giving more than we want why should i go with the minister so in that way the the intelligent person thought and he started going directly to the king so that is what connecting to the supreme so in this story he explained so you are happy by taking from the third hand not directly from the supreme 
you have the opportunity this is the only time the supreme is giving you and uh, daitis are limit um, daitis are just the ministers they are not capable of giving anything by by themselves they had to get from the supreme soul the almighty father and they had to give you so it really i was shocked to hear this story because being in bhakti mark i thought devotee the, the, the daitis are everything so i was shocked and i came home next day i was i was thinking of this story and uh, in my story uh, in my devotion i was reading on shirdi sai baba book in that he always says a word i don't know whoever is indian background they will connect very well what i am saying so he always used to say one word sabka malik ek god is only one i am not the god god is only one we all know that but still i was praying to him because it didn't touch to my intellect until then with that story the lock on my intellect opened and uh, this is how i was slowly thinking of it and meanwhile since shreeni was by his knowledge he went and he asked the edison center can we do a public program in our area because uh, people are moving this is the new area and it is 40 minutes away from the edison center in new jersey so he went and asked can we do a program so the sisters from the center they came and they they said oh, they saw the place and they said okay we will do how many people can come then shrinivas said she is doing lot of devotion she will easily gather 100 people so then they said okay this is the date february 9th let us do the program do the uh, mark, uh, what you say and yeah, distribute the flyers and do the things what need to be done so we started doing i am even though i was not believing that much but i am a person if something uh, somebody needs something from me or if i am helpful for something i am ready to do that is my nature since childhood so sisters asked that we need to do a program so i am i did my uh service i called all my friends everyone and um, 130 people showed up the program started and at the end of the program um we as we say every time would be put the registration and asked uh, if you are interested we just fill up the registration so they registered 30 people registered 30 Thirty people were registered, and now the sisters were thinking, "What to do?" Thirty people calling them to Edison Center, forty minutes away. Is it, uh, is it um, practical? What shall we do? Then immediately said, "If you are okay, you can do it here." This is what we both said. Then they said, "Okay, we will do it here." Okay, that's how the Gita Parshala started. and um, i i didn't do the course still okay i'm not at a bk student yet so they started the course when they started the course when the sister came to do the course as a courtesy as a respect i sat in the class so when i sat in the class slowly each and every point was going in and touching and slowly each lesson each uh, each class was very interesting i was thinking why i did not understand this before wow this is so nice and um, i was looking forward for the classes 
so this is how baba took me in i always say that baba invested so much on me finally he himself came home sat in the house and he claimed me he took me into his lap so i'm this is my first experience baba is karan karavan har he knows what i am what i will be but i don't know what i what i am so i was struggling with the doing things going deep down and that's the time it again opened my intellect so um if i would have took baba's directions from 1999 things might be different but as per the drama maybe i had to go with it face it baba was signaling me at every step but still it took 10 years for me to take the knowledge to come into baba's land and from that day onwards this place is geeta patshala and i we are we both are the instruments and uh, okay so oh, shanti so let us go into meditation let's sit comfortably relax relax your shoulders sit upright let us go inwards visualize the sun as a tiny point of light a sparkling star seated in the center of my forehead i the living form the soul playing my role through this physical costume made up of five elements i the soul the embodiment of peace it's my innate i the soul belong to the supreme soul he is the ocean of peace he resides in the supreme abode my sweet silence home now through my intellect to my thoughts i the soul going beyond this world beyond the galaxy reaching to my sweet home to my sweet father
whom we are waiting to meet. For many birds. Is the ocean of love. He is filling me. With the drop of. To quench my thirst of love for many birds. Now coming back to this physical body, the costume, to my original position. Okay, now my second experience. In 2014, I was met with major accident. Myself and my aunt both were in the car and while coming at the T-junction, the driver from the side road, I was going straight, the driver from the side road did not see me or uh, couldn't, uh, I don't know what was the reason, he didn't stop, she didn't stop, sorry, it was sister and uh, she hit me um, in the driver's side exactly where the, the front driver wheel is there, few inches towards the front planet. So what I'm trying to say is the, if the car hit me few inches behind, I'm no more. So the accident was such a major. Car was total. And my aunt was, uh, um, she was okay because of her age. She was hospitalized. But I, being in the driver's seat, and the accident happened just next to me. Next means like just few inches away. But I was totally fine. When that incident happened, I was unconscious. I don't even know anything. And once I got up, the car, the all the airbags were out and my aunt was crying. And this is what I remember. And the car was on, on the fire. We are coming from grocery shopping and all the vegetables were crashed, like crushed out. So the impact was, she hit me in the front, again in the back. Again, the car means it, it, it was like uh, it was in the little bit of fast speed also looks like. So it was really a deadly accident. But I was out with minor, minor pains and little bruise on the hand. That's all because of the airbag, we, steering wheel airbag. And then I came out, I helped my aunt, called 911, called Srinivas, and I did everything. The crew from ambulance, the ambulance crew came and by seeing that accident, they were saying, who is the driver? Who is the driver? I'm the driver. Are you okay? Really, are you okay? Yes, I am okay. No, no, we had to check you, get in the uh, ambulance. No, I am fine. I can come in the car. So they were very surprised by seeing the scene. And they took my aunt in the ambulance and I was, I went in the car following her. And they did everything. And it was minor, minor, um, um, not even injuries, I would say, pains, neck pain, something like that. 
my aunt was hospitalized for five six days and she really did suffer a little bit not little she did suffer and the other car also they faced but i was totally totally protected by baba i am in this costume today because of baba's protection the accident was so bad so before baba always says one thing if you serve me i will serve you right he says in the murli right and in the geeta also it's it's like um, one of the thing krishna gives uh, draupadi um, the saris because draupadi served him when he had cut something like that i remember so few days be uh, few days before we had a rakhi and one total one week i was in the center serving there for the raksha bandhan and the week before the seniors came from india from hyderabad so i was we were taking care of them taking them to everywhere so i think that when we do good karma automatically it comes back to us and when we do elevated karma that is serving the god automatically we are protected that's the lesson i learned and i am so thankful to baba that um baba is protecting me at each and every step i always yesterday's murali baba was saying that i sing the song that my children wa wa my children sing wa fortune wa my fortune so i also sing the song always wa my baba is everything for me and he is creating my fortune at every step he is awakening me he is giving me lot of protection his canopy is with me and um, i as a instrument or uh, being in this place moni ben moni didi one time she said when i was very new in knowledge she gave me a blessing live as a trustee um uh, be live as a trustee and be like a lotus so this is what i always remember and i always keep that in my practice i never see this home as my home in 2009 when baba came we surrendered and always see it as a trustee living in this home as an instrument for baba and for that what i do is every morning we do the classes and afternoon i make sure offering bhog is the best time for me the day in the day i enjoy offering bhog how because i see that this is baba's home baba is sitting here and he is the head of the family i need to offer bhog if i don't offer bhog for any reason any day i feel i don't feel good at all because the elder person in our home we are making them star this is what my feelings are so i take care of bhog offering every day and i keep the baba's home very clean because i believe that every morning baba comes to this house to see his place so keep the and i always keep the kitchen clean because kitchen is baba's place where we create where we prepare brahma bhojan so these are the small small things we might think but these are the means of protection baba's home cooking in baba's remembrance keeping baba in the home serving baba so this is what the biggest protection i feel 
and along with that if any situation we, as uh, we all know harsha bai was also sharing situations will come maya will come definitely for everyone no matter what we are right so when situation comes i go to baba room i don't talk to anyone go sit with him and take the murli and start reading the murli within few lines i get the solution for the problem so i have so much trust faith on baba baba is there with me baba is there with all of us the more i follow baba's directions the more baba's protection is there for all of us so this is how i experience this is what i had with my accident this is what my canopy of protection is shall we go to the meditation okay let's sit comfortably let's take a deep breath relax breathe in breathe out visualize the sun as a sparkling diamond in this corporeal body i am the soul karan karavan har baba is with me He is my supreme parent. He is guiding me with his shrimat. with his elevated versions the more i follow the elevated directions from my father the more i am protected the more i serve the father it will become an elevated actions help me to create my multi million for fortune and also helps me to be protected baba's directions or the canopy on my head Baba Shri Mat protects me from going down. 
takes me upward. Put me in the right direction. Makes me elevator being. Protect me from not doing anything wrong. Baba is our guide, our elevated teacher. In this conference age, giving us elevated inheritance the more. I follow the Father's footsteps. The more I create my elevated fortune. Baba is inspiring me to do elevated tasks. So now my third experience going to Mount Up. First time I went to Mount Up, it was very beautiful. No doubt Mount Up, Madhuban, sorry, Madhuban. The name itself shows how great that is. So I I had the same experience. So we, I went from US directly to Abu. So when we reached to Abu Road, I bought to climb on my vehicle, getting onto the mountain. I felt God's light. Shri Baba's rays. And I was totally lost in that experience. So the whole my path going to Abu, going to, I was lost in Baba's light race. Experienced Baba so deeply. That was the amazing experience. And then reached uh, Pandavavan. When I reached Pandavavan, actually as a family we went. So when we reached Pandavavan, I was uh, going walking. I don't know how many of you got the chance to be to uh, to visit Mount Tavu, but uh, try to visit. It's a beautiful place. So when I reached to the Pandavavan, when I was walking into the gate, inside the gate, sorry, inside the gate. There is a big hallway, courtyard. So in that courtyard, um, Brahma Baba's photo will be there, opening his arms and he is inviting the children, welcoming the children. So and not only that, the moment I came into that courtyard, I felt this is what I was missing. This is truly my home. I had been here before. This was my experience. And after that, the next morning, we went to Chardam Yatra. We say Chardam like Baba's room, Baba's heart, um, history hall, and uh, Santistam. So in that Chardam Yatra, when I went to hut, 
I felt Brahma Baba's presence. Brahma Baba was literally there. I felt his presence in that garden. So he was taking me around, showing me. So that was the best thing. Until then, I did not have that much connection with Brahma Baba. I was doing everything and uh, I came to knowledge in 2009. I went to in 2010. Until then, I was mostly connected to Shiva Baba. And since I came from path of Bhakti, so Brahma Baba, um, uh, since in the Bhakti Marg, we saw many, many gurus. So Brahma Baba is almost like that, I felt. And I was not much connected with Brahma Baba, only Shiva Baba. But on that day in Pandav Bhavan, in the hut, um, in that garden, in the hut, near the hut, in that area. So I felt Brahma Baba's presence. He was there welcoming and he was taking me around. So it's like... Uh, Madhavan, when that trip, I felt like mother and father inviting me to home, waiting for the child to come home. This was my experience, first time I went. And along with that, the family in Mount Abu, really, really loving, very beautiful. They take care of you, they care for you, they give a lot of love, their hospitality is so good. It's really amazed. Sometimes in Laukik home, we miss that. But in Madhuban, every moment you feel that you are taken care, you are given so much love. So it's the, it's really Baba says, right? Live like a practical example. Madhuban is the place where we, where I learned so much how to be, like their actions, the, sorry, the Baba says, whatever you do, others should be served with your words, thoughts, actions. That's the practical example, Mount Abu, especially Panda Bhavan, because that is the Yajna Bhumi, where Brahma Baba and Shri Baba, they leave. The Egya was start. This continued when Brahma Baba was there. In India, there's the Egya started. But it's a very, very, very touching experience I had. I, in Since I was in the path of Bhakti, I had been to many, many pilgrimages, pilgrimage places. Pilgrimage place means we go, we do whatever, we, we book the ticket, we go book by the darshan. So many things, everything was like everything nowadays, everything was commercial. Even when I was doing bhakti also, which 15 years back. But Mount Abu, it was totally, totally, this is the peace on the earth that there is. I haven't already started. That was my experience in Mount Abu. So very nice, very touching. And uh, um, if any of you did not go yet, I really, really encourage you to make a plan, go to Mount Abu, see what our sweet home looks like. Because in the confluence age, this is our home. This is where we all belong to because that is our father's place. So this is our place also. So this is what my experience of Mount Dabu. Om Shanti. And let's Anyone go. have any questions or comments, feel free to unmute yourself and share. Om Shanti, sister. Uh, I was thinking about uh, the two lines you said, Mohini Devi uh, taught you live like a trustee and live 
was it live like a lotus or live like a trustee be uh, sorry live like a lotus be trusty okay um and i see that in you uh that you almost are floating above the worldly affairs um how do you get to that stage how do you because there's still a tendency to react to things happening in life um so how would you some yukti or some awareness of how we can get to that stage thank you for your um, thank you it's a very good question so main thing is to um having full having self respect self respect is the first and foremost thing when i have respect on myself if somebody says something also we don't lose our patience our tolerance and we will re- respond instead of react so self respect will come once I, when i understand that what is my speciality what am i receiving at this most auspicious time right sister and of course baba's directions every morally every morally baba tells us what to do every day we receive the guidance from baba the more i read, uh, read the morally the more i will become the embodiment of it i forgot to tell you i in the initial days i used to read morally four to five times a day so every every few minutes i get open the morally and read and morally was the only thing generally i don't listen to any classes um it's not that we shouldn't listen we had to listen because they they churn so much and explain but every churning is coming from morally so i am a person who is totally attracted to morally and listen to morally read the morally take a notes of the morally when i am sitting um uh free i just think about what they churn on the morally yeah. so That's when you are reading the, so when you are reading the morally no sorry um uh, were you saying something uh, no go ahead okay. sorry sister uh, no no uh, when you are reading the morally are you saying when you read it you are saying are you thinking what is baba what, what is this tell baba telling me personally in this sentence yeah so in the morally i will make a note where i had to churn on that day so i take a point while doing my hands will be working and my mind will be thinking on that point i keep on churning on a point why baba said this how can i implement where i need to change how this point helps me in a practical way so like that all the time i used to churn a lot on the morally in my initial days now frankly speaking i am not doing that much i just read morally once and maybe if i, cl- I have class second time but initially first 10 to 12 years i am in knowledge for 15 now last 1 2 years i am not doing that many times but first 10 to 12 years morally morally and morally 3 to 4 to 5 times i used to read morally and when i have time churn on the morally points this was my practice this is what helped me maybe what you are seeing a change in me om shanti thank you thank you sister you can even have any other questions feel free to unmute yourself and share so padma ben uh, i see the beautiful uh, picture behind you all the dadis and uh, all the dadas it reminds us of the current time not just of the past 14 years of yagya or tapasya and not just the time of madhuban 
but they are also very much around us like the picture that you have behind so what is your personal experiences of uh, the subtle region and the company of all of our avyak family so brother this photo always reminds because so i when i understood this knowledge i had a feeling that i missed all the ancestor souls um who are the pillars for this agya i missed being with them so when i saw this picture in madhuban i felt that this was created for us so this is baba's room so every day along with the meditation in baba's room at the end of the meditation we take drishti from them the ancestor souls are still around us helping us moving around and guiding us at every step that's the feeling we have anything in particular that you uh take the support of ancestors for example i see uh dhyani dadi behind i i saw a couple of her pictures and uh, one of the story baba was sharing was uh, uh baba sent uh, dhyani sister to there is uh, when somebody is giving a class in those days there is also somebody always meditating next to them creating that powerful atmosphere dhyani dadi was always there you'll see a lot of the pictures mama is giving class and dani dadi is there creating the powerful atmosphere so i use some of those pictures and and take support uh, to to create that atmosphere wherever i am uh, so any particular way you are using a uh, avyak uh, family support dadi support right now in particular or any that particular is- experiences yeah yeah dadi's support definitely i'm sorry bhai dadi's support dadi's and mamma's support definitely mamma as a mother take her support at every step because uh, mamma is the world mother jagadamba so with uh, to become shiv shakti definitely mamma's guidance mamma's support uh i take and uh, also this whoever comes to baba's room whoever is around definitely they also encourage to see this picture take the drishti and take the mamma jagadmata's uh, drishti so that we also will receive that divine power of shiv shakti so that's how i feel not my yeah this is what my experience is because i never saw most of them i didn't see except janaki dadi and gulzar dadi so the the most of them were gone by the time i came so seeing them in the subtle form through this picture beautiful because at the day we were having this discussion about uh, how dadi sir serving us and uh, how to take the help of what the service that is are doing now is one of the big thing that came up and one of the topic that came is that the gulzar uh in some other discussion it came like that the gulzar was always pure for the last 7 to 8 births and uh, and when she first came in gyan when she was 8 years old then it shows for she was always in dhyan she was dhyan not like going to settle region and having visions of golden age and stuff no she was not having that kind of uh, dhyan like other dadis she was always going into deep silence she always used to go into deep silence and uh, connecting to baba even when she first came into dhyan and uh, and she was always uh, so pure that baba himself could step into her and then and then connect to us through dadi so so this discussion was coming especially when we say like oh god is in me in me and god is in also in you uh, it is not that easy for god to come into anybody's body <laughs> and it 
it took of course brahma baba is at different level it took uh, dadi uh, almost like seven births to have prepared to host baba and uh, and, and just thinking about uh, dadi and then her stage itself pulls us to 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 step into her stage and enjoy the the company of baba when we become subtle we can enjoy the company of the subtle beings it was a beautiful thing thank you for sharing <laughs> very good point by your brother i did know that the gulzar dadi was uh, so pure for many birds yeah definitely she is a god's chariot that means definitely she has to be that divine that pure Mm. good to know that point yeah. yeah anyone else wants to share and ask any questions or comments so any particular practice you are doing to prepare for the next phase padmaven uh, this next we have to serve from the sacred state and things are changing very fast not just the wars that have been going on for a while in israel and all other stuff but things are changing very fast so the recent practice i started is uh, the seed form mm. uh, with determination um, generally we do meditation going to the subtle world and from there seed form very few minutes or sometimes not even minutes we stay so now i took a um, um pure thought that i had to practice the seed stage more and i am doing that staying in the seed stage at least 10 minutes a day at least this is my constant constant practice i want to 10 minutes means maybe sometimes if you know we stay in meditation whole day how come we are saying only 10 minutes but we stay in meditation most of the time with karma yoga or most of the time with talking to brahma baba being in the subtle world and bab dada like that but seed stage is more powerful which we don't pay that much attention to which i don't sorry which i don't pay that much attention to be there for that long so i started recently um being there at least 10 minutes uh pure pure no diversions not one time 10 minutes pure because we sit in meditation every evening i sit 6:30 to 7:30 no matter what i do the meditation but in that 6:30 to 7:30 how much time i am in that seed stage amrut vela we do so how much time i am in pure seed stage so i am paying more attention to the incorporeal form this is my recent practice i started with thank you with seed stage a uh, lot of things gets uh, resolved burn away our, our karmic accounts and uh, mainly the sanskaras will transform that uh, seed stage and there is a lot of power that comes from there yeah. yeah right this is the i feel this is the need of the time Mm. and need need of myself to be for to become complete because i always think that everyone were doing for so long i just came 15 years back it's still so much to do so to, in order to wrap up fast i had to really race with my past effort of seed stage so that i can settle i can become more pure and move on Mm. Mm. right thank you for sharing the beautiful experience uh, so we can wrap up with a nice meditation okay thank you so 
and um, harsha bhai thank you so much for giving me this opportunity because when you asked me i was thinking what to means like what to share but you really really gave me a good opportunity baba gave this opportunity through you to go deep inwards and check what are the treasures that he really gave me thank you thank you thank you for taking time at this late hour <laughs> okay let's go into meditation om shanti now let's all sit comfortably see the sun a tiny point of light sparkling in the center of the forehead I the soul. I master all my dear authority. All my dear authority, supreme soul, is my companion. I always keep him with me while doing every action I'm serving through my thoughts along with Baba. Now I'm sitting on the top of the globe as an angel. Receiving the power from the almighty father spreading the powerful vibrations to all the souls on this planet to all the four corners of the world baba's powerful vibrations baba's peaceful vibrations i am receiving and spreading to all the five elements I bless all the souls that all the souls of this world have the right for the father's inheritance. All souls should see the father, recognize the father. and should claim their inheritance having this pure thought sending blessings to the whole world i 
at the end of the day, we all belong to one family. We all are the children of the one father. All the songs should receive father's peace, father's trace of love and powers. I want to add one point, brother. While doing meditation, I remember the sister's question. So I always keep Baba as my companion. Whatever I'm doing, I make sure Baba is with me. Wherever I am going, I take Baba with me. So before going anywhere, go to Baba's room, tell Baba, come, let's go. And Whatever I am doing, first thing is Baba knows. I tell to Baba. So keeping Baba in my every connection and companionship also help me to protect for my protection. Right? He's protecting me in that way also. Have, having him all the time in my connection. Oh, Shanti. Um, thank so. you, thank you. This was very powerful. Thank you. Ekrayan, mm -hmm. you want to say something? I have a question, sorry. Sure. Um, sure. So when you mentioned to stay in a seed stage, how can I stay longer? Because I feel like when I'm talking to Baba, I'm talking to Baba longer. But when I have to go in a seed stage, I am there for a little bit and then coming down right away. Yeah, that's the point, sister. Talking to Baba means it's again we are coming in the car in um, subtle region, subtle region, angelic form. So that's why I said just ten minutes const uh, ten minutes of seed stage in twenty four hours means it's very hard to be in seed stage for a long time. In seed stage, the soul will experience total lightness. No other thoughts except one or two thoughts, just being in there, being light, just feeling that Baba's rays of light falling on the soul, just being in that incorporeal world. So if the thoughts coming means again we are coming to subtle world. So that's what it is, little effort required for that. Seed stage is almost being no body for me, no subtle body for me, no need to talk anything, just absorbing Baba's race of love, Baba's race of light, Baba's race of purity, Baba's race of powers, just absorbing, no way, no conversation. Right? This is how I experience. Arshabai, you can add anything that you ever practice, whatever you do for the seed stage. This is how I experience seed stage. Yeah, thank you for that beautiful explanation, Padma Ben. So one thing that I do personally is uh, <clears throat> as I uh, become very comfortable being subtle, uh, feel the company of the you know when when we are at home when our parents and grandparents are there uh, we feel very safe but we are not keep talking to them like oh i love you you love me and we don't even keep talking all that stuff with our parents or grandparents but we feel very safe when they're around so in the same way when we are in the subtle state we feel the company of all mama baba and all that is there and then we feel very safe at home in the subtle region and at the same time uh, that subtle state helps us to go into the stillness 
we are not only just feeling safe now but we are feeling connected to the powerhouse baba uh, and that uh, stillness becomes very natural for me personally what helped me is uh, i feel peaceful i feel very safe i feel loved i'm accepting love i'm absorbing love and then i slowly shift my gear from subtle to to very subtle soul is very subtle baba is very subtle baba's love is very pure and powerful and eternal so i generally focus on eternal aspect of that experience when we go in, when i try to go into the seed stage um so that helps me to stay longer uh make it natural it is not that oh i have to be there for 10 minutes and then 10 minutes after that i have to come down no it is my natural state it is my eternal state i am enjoying this natural and eternal state of being subtle and still um when you are enjoying you can stay longer you can stay longer you you absorb longer and uh, another thing that helped me was Uh, the appetite of the soul is much higher we are not aware of it because being a golden age deity means you have to be very powerful and you have to last for 5000 years like 50 decades <laughs> it's a long period of time so you have you are, i am supposed to take lot of power so if i restrict my 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 capacity of absorbing uh i i i cannot take more so the point being uh more you relax more you uh expand your sense of self not only expanding your awareness but also expanding in your time expanding your stage uh, making that seed stage natural and 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 continue to hold that stage even when you come out of it <laughs> even you are interacting and especially when baba says like be a soul and see others as a soul in other words baba is telling hold your seed stage hold your stage seed stage and connect to other person in their seed stage so so that's what they do in golden age without any effort because it is very natural for them and it is natural there because we have to do that practice here and uh, we have to make it that natural so so it's very important to find a yukti to keep to sustain that stage long period of time to sustain that stage long period of time right brother good very good ex- uh, explanation definitely the soul stage we had to continue the whole day every thing we see everyone we see seeing the self as a soul definitely but my point is like um, going to incorporeal world seed stage means going to incorporeal world for a certain period of time because there uh, i feel that the thoughts will pull me down so go i want to go beyond that that's where the, the that difference i was seeing at right so, unrestricted that <laughs> no distinctions <laughs> yeah 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 very nice very nice thank you so much family thank you harsha bhai and uh, thank you baba for this good opportunity thank Om you thank you